sometimes we are quick to give up. We've done all that we can do, and we think there's nothing else that can be done. We become shipwrecked, lost at sea, stranded, just getting by. Well, I didn't get on this boat called Christianity just to get by. I got on this boat to get to the other side. Amen? I don't want to be lost at sea. I don't want to be shipwrecked. I don't want to be stranded. I want to make it to the other side to see what the end is going to be. I don't know about you, but now I, I know that I want to continue forward. I'm not going to allow the setbacks to keep me stranded in the sea of life. Yeah, I know from time to time we're going to be tossed and turned, and, and, and it's not always going to be smooth sailing. It's not always going to be still waters. And, and I'm going to need help from time to time. When, when I finally got saved, I realized that I could not do it on my own. I knew that I was going to need help. You see, I always wanted to be the best that I could be. No matter what I did, I wanted to be the best that I could be. When I did carpenter work, I wanted to be the best carpenter that I could be. If I wanted to be a doctor, I wanted to be the best doctor that I could be. If I wanted to be president, I wanted to be the best president that I could be. When I became your pastor, I now want to be the best pastor that I can be. When I became a Christian, I wanted to be the best Christian that I could be. But we all need help. We can't do it on our own. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. We cannot do this thing on our own. We can feed upon each other. Where we are weak, we can draw upon someone else's strength. We cannot do this on our own. Sometimes we need someone to pray with. Someone we need, sometimes we need someone to talk to. Sometimes we just need a shoulder to cry on. Sometimes we just need a pat on the back of, of encouragement to just let someone else know that, that they're on in this thing with you. We're in this together. And, and just to continue on, holding on to God's unchanging hand. And if we don't have someone else to encourage us, we need to encourage ourselves. Because we know that God is with us, and we are not alone. But no matter how, how much and how good man's intentions are, we can't always be there to help your brother or your sister when they need help. We're not omnipresent like God is. We, we, we cannot be in two places at one time. But know this. We are still not alone. We still have someone to lean on. We still have someone to depend on. We still have someone to put our faith and our trust in. We still have someone to talk to. But just a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your trouble. Tell him all about your struggle. Amen. Tell him all about your heartaches and your pain. Just ask the Savior to help you. He will strengthen you. He will aid you. He will carry you through. I can tell it to him. I can talk to him. I can talk to the master. When we make mistakes, don't run away from God. That's when we should be running to God. Sometimes we want to get like a little kid when he, when he does something wrong. He, he tries to hide from his parents because he knows he's going to be punished. Well, see, God doesn't want us to fear him. We're not supposed to run away from God. We, that's when we go to God and we pray, Lord, I've, I've sinned. I'm asking for your forgiveness. I need you to help me through this time of trouble. That's when we draw near to God. And as we draw near to him, he will draw nigh to us. Go to the Father. Put your faith in action. Do all that you can do and trust that God will do the rest. After we've done all that we can, we just stand. You stand on the word of God. You stand on what God has told you to do. You get in your word and you read. You get direction. You get, get uh, a purpose. You get a plan that God is, is, wants you to call uh, to carry out for him. Do what God has called you to do. Don't stay in that mess. Don't stay shipwrecked. Don't let the, uh, 
Don't let yourself get off track. Stay on course. When you put your hands in God's hands, he will take you through the storm. He will guide you around the obstacles. He will lead you out of the darkness. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. In this world, we are in constant danger of death. We hear on the news how the, the uh, congresswoman was just shot and other people around her. Just from the association that they had with her, they were shot as well. They was in uh, the wrong place at the wrong time. But in this world, although we are in constant danger, we're not to fear. God is with us. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. He doesn't want us to walk around in fear of that something might happen. I, I can't go there because this might happen, and, and I can't go over there because that might happen. And I, I don't want to go to the grocery store anymore because somebody may start shooting down there. He does not want us to live our lives in bondage. That's what the enemy wants. That's what the enemy wants you to do, to live in fear. God did not give us that spirit. He wants us to be free in him, not in bondage anymore, not in fear. The Lord is my shepherd. And we have to allow the shepherd to fight for us. The only fight that he told us to fight is the good fight of faith. For the battle is not yours. It's the Lord. God wants us to experience joy. He wants us to experience peace and, and fulfillment and to live a life that is totally committed to him. That's where we fall short. We don't want to totally commit our life to the Lord. That's the only way your life is going to have full meaning and a purpose is if you totally commit your life to the Lord. And here, out of a simple act of obedience, God can turn your life around. He can change your life just out of a simple act of obedience. Here in our text in Luke 5, verse 4, Jesus told Simon Peter to launch into the deep. Let down your net. And Peter, like many of us, is a little stubborn. I said Peter, like many of us are, was a little stubborn. Well, you know, you you know who you're ta I'm talking about. You, you know who you are. I'm not going to mention any names. I'm not going to put anybody on the spot. But sometimes we can just be stubborn. We think we know it all. We like to do things our way. Can't nobody tell us nothing. If I can't have my way, I'm going to take my ball and go home. My way or the highway? Peter was a strong-willed person. He rebuked Jesus in Matthew 16 and 22. When Jesus told him that he, Jesus, was going to suffer many things at the hands of the chief priests and, and the scribes and be killed and raised up on the third day. And Peter said, no, no, that's not going to happen. And Jesus told him to get behind thee, Satan. You are an offense to me. Because if we are not following Christ, then we're following Satan. You cannot serve two masters. You're either on God's side or you're on Satan's side. There was another time when Jesus told the disciples that, that, that they were going to separate themselves from him and, uh, when he was captured in the Garden of Gethsemane. And, and, and they was going to separate themselves from him and, and deny him. And, and, and once again, Peter, that strong-willed person, he told him, no, no, master, that's never going to happen. I'll never deny you. And Jesus told him, before the cock crew, you're going to deny me three times. And we all know how that worked out. So Peter was a bit of a hardhead. 
So here Jesus tell, uh, tells Peter to, to go out to the deep waters where I told you and let down your nets. So here old Peter, once again, he says to him, Master, we, we've toiled all night. I, I'm an experienced fisherman. I, I've been out here before. I've been fishing for years. I, I know where to place my nets at. I, I know where the places to go out to catch fish. It's just no use. We tried already. We did all that we can do. Just no use. But Peter, he said, nevertheless, I did all I can do. I know we ain't going to get no fish, but nevertheless, I'll do what you say. Whatever you say, we'll do it. Jesus is saying, I don't care what you think. Just do what I say. It doesn't matter what you think. Just do what God tells you to do. So many times God is trying to give us spiritual understanding, and we're still standing over here in the flesh with our own mind, with our own thoughts, and our own will. You can't tell me nothing. I know. I know what to do. I know more than God does. It's time for us to launch into the deep. Let down your nets where God is telling you to. Be obedient. Go deeper into the word of God. Come out to Bible study. Come out to Sunday school. Come out to revival. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go out into the house of the Lord. We are either moving towards God or we're moving away from God. If you want to go deep, you have to get away from the shallow. That shallow way of thinking, that shallow commitment, that shallow relationship. You know how it is when, when you go into a swimming pool or, or, or a, a, the ocean. You, 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 you want to see how, how cold the water is, so you stick your, your toes in there. You jiggle around a little bit. But you don't want to totally go head first in the water. You don't want to totally commit yourself. And even though once you do that, your body temperature is going to adjust, to the to cold, and it's not going to be just like you thought it was. It, it's not going to be as cold as you think it is once you totally commit yourself and go into the water. We have to submerge ourselves in the Word of God. We have to totally submerge ourselves in the Word of God. And that's where some of us are right now. We just don't want to go deep. We don't want to totally give our life to the Lord. I give you this much, Lord, but I'm going to hold on to some of this. I, I don't want to get rid of this here yet. And that's what he requires. He wants us to give, give him our all. For it's all to him that we owe anyway. Once Peter submitted and did what the Lord told him to do, there was an overflow. There was an abundance. He poured out to him a blessing that he didn't have room to receive. God is waiting for you to go deeper into him so he can pour into your life in an abundance, so, so he can pour into your life an overflow. Because he came that we would have life and have it more abundantly. He is waiting for you to say, Here I am, Lord. Send me. Use me. I say yes to your will. I say yes to your way. My way just doesn't work. I am ready 